Young and Duke successfully rendezvoused and re-docked with Mattingly in the CSM. To minimize the transfer of lunar dust from the LM cabin into the CSM, Young and Duke cleaned the cabin before opening the hatch separating the two spacecraft. After opening the hatch and reuniting with Mattingly, the crew transferred the samples Young and Duke had collected on the surface into the CSM for transfer to Earth. After transfers were completed, the crew would sleep before jettisoning the empty lunar module ascent stage the next day, when it was to be crashed intentionally into the lunar surface in order to calibrate the seismometer Young and Duke had left on the surface. The next day, after final checks were completed, the expended LM ascent stage was jettisoned. The ascent stage eventually crashed into the lunar surface nearly a year after the mission. The crew's next task, after jettisoning the lunar module ascent stage, was to release a subsatellite into lunar orbit from the CSM's scientific instrument bay. Just under five hours after the subsatellite release, on the CSM's 65th orbit around the moon, its service propulsion system main engine was reignited to propel the craft on a trajectory that would return it to Earth. The SPS engine performed the burn flawlessly despite the malfunction that had delayed their landing several days previously. During the return to Earth, Mattingly performed an 83-minute EVA to retrieve film cassettes from the cameras in the Sim Bay, with assistance from Duke who remained at the command module's hatch. At approximately 173,000 nautical miles from Earth, it was the second, deep space, EVA in history, performed at great distance from any planetary body. As of 2023, it remains one of only three such EVAs, all performed during Apollo's J missions under similar circumstances. During the EVA, Mattingly set up a biological experiment, the Microbial Ecology Evaluation Device, an experiment unique to Apollo 16, to evaluate the response of microbes to the space environment. The crew carried out various housekeeping and maintenance tasks aboard the spacecraft and ate a meal before concluding the day. The penultimate day of the flight was largely spent performing experiments, aside from a 20-minute press conference during the second half of the day. During the press conference, the astronauts answered questions pertaining to several technical and non-technical aspects of the mission prepared and listed by priority at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston by journalists covering the flight. In addition to numerous housekeeping tasks, the astronauts prepared the spacecraft for its atmospheric re-entry the next day. At the end of the crew's final full day in space, the spacecraft was approximately 143,000 kilometers from Earth and closing at a rate of about 2,100 meters per second. When the wake-up call was issued to the crew for their final day in space by Capcom England, the CSM was about 45,000 nautical miles from Earth, traveling just over 2,700 meters per second. Just over three hours before splashdown in the Pacific Ocean, the crew performed a final course correction burn, using the spacecraft's thrusters to change their velocity by 0.43 meters per second. Approximately 10 minutes before re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, the cone-shaped command module containing the three crew members separated from the service module, which would burn up during re-entry. At 265 hours and 37 minutes into the mission, at a velocity of about 11,000 meters per second, Apollo 16 began atmospheric re-entry. At its maximum, the temperature of the heat shield was between 2,200 and 2,480 degrees Celsius. After successful parachute deployment and less than 14 minutes after re-entry began, the command module splashed down in the Pacific Ocean 350 kilometers southeast of the island of Kiritamati 265 hours, 51 minutes, 5 seconds after liftoff. One reason why Descartes had been selected was that it was visually different from previous Apollo landing sites, but rocks from there proved to be closely related to those from the Fra Mauro Formation, Apollo 14's landing site. These conclusions were informed by observations from Mattingly, the first CMP to use binoculars in his observations, who had seen that from the perspective of lunar orbit, there was nothing distinctive about the Descartes formation it fit right in with the Mare Imbrium structure. Other results gained from Apollo 16 included the discovery of two new auroral belts around Earth. Young and Duke served as backups for Apollo 17, and Duke retired from NASA in December 1975. On Monday, May 8, ground service equipment being used to empty the residual toxic reaction control system fuel in the command module tanks exploded in a naval air station hangar. 46 people were sent to the hospital for 24 to 48 hours observation, most suffering from inhalation of toxic fumes. Most seriously injured was a technician who suffered a fractured kneecap when a cart overturned on him. The hole was blown in the hangar roof 250 feet above, about 40 windows in the hangar were shattered. The command module suffered a 3-inch gash in one panel. The Apollo 16 command module Casper is on display at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, 
following a transfer of ownership from NASA to the Smithsonian in November 1973. The Lunar Module Ascent stage separated from the CSM on April 24, 1972, but NASA lost control of it. Due to a communication failure before impact the exact location was unknown until January 2016, when it was discovered within Mare Insularum by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, approximately 260 kilometers southwest of Copernicus Crater. Duke left two items on the moon, both of which he photographed while there. One is a plastic encased photo portrait of his family. The reverse of the photo is signed by Duke's family and bears this message. This is the family of astronaut Duke from planet Earth. Landed on the moon, April 1972. The other item was a commemorative medal issued by the United States Air Force, which was celebrating its 25th anniversary in 1972. He took two medals, leaving one on the moon and donating the other to the National Museum of the United States Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. In 2006, shortly after Hurricane Ernesto affected Bath, North Carolina, 11-year-old Kevin Shans discovered a piece of metal debris on the ground near his beach home. Shans and a friend discovered a stamp on the 91-centimeter flat metal sheet, which upon further inspection turned out to be a faded copy of the Apollo 16 mission insignia. NASA later confirmed the object to be a piece of the first stage of the Saturn V that had launched Apollo 16 into space. In July 2011, after returning the piece of debris at NASA's request, 16-year-old Shans was given an all-access tour of the Kennedy Space Center and VIP seating for the launch of STS-135, the final mission of the Space Shuttle program.